All right. What a week it has been for this man. William Knight gets another victory, an official full-on UFC roster spot, and already has his Octagon debut booked at UFC 253 later on this month. William, how are you, man? Crazy week. I'm good. I'm good, man. It's, it's, it really is a crazy week. <laughs> For sure. I mean, besides crazy, like how else would you describe this week? Because it started less than in an auspicious way on the day before the fight with Cody Brundage. You missed weight on your first attempt. You nail it on the second try. Did you did you know that you were going to miss there? Like, how did you react to that whole situation before you were able to to hit the weight there? I already knew I was going to make weight. It's just that I ran out of time. I'm not. I'm not. The sauna. The sauna situation was just really it. Like. I already knew I was going to make weight. Like, I was still peeing and everything else. So it was really just me running out of time. I went to sleep and and fucked up on a little time because my time difference is a three-hour difference in Connecticut than it is in Las Vegas. So my phone was set a certain way, and that shit threw me off completely. To catch up to three hours, it was like, oh, damn. I was 207.5, went out there 206. I could have been 205. I could have went to 204, 203. I how much water and I still had left to cut. So it's not like I sat there and was, oh, I can't cut anymore. I got it done. Like people, people in this world need to understand. I made weight. Right. I never <laughs> missed. Weight. I made weight. And through a pandemic, I made weight with, with being restricted. I made weight being almost 260 pounds again, because I had no gym. The foods were empty and shelves in the whole nine and I had to eat what I had to do. I made 205, 206, and I'm going to do it again in another three weeks. You took on Cody Brundage, who was getting a lot of buzz over the last year. He comes out very aggressively, which kind of surprised me. He shot, goes for a takedown, has your back, looked close to finishing the fight, but then It was like deja vu of your CES fight with Rocky Edwards. You're able to keep Cody's arms tied up. He was unable to land any more damage. And in that moment, you looked like you were just like chilling at the beach in that spot. Like how much trouble were you actually in there when he was raining on those shots? So when he was hitting me, I was talking to Herb Dean. I told him I was fine. So me talking to him was a game changer that people understand. Like if a ref sees you not responding and you're just flustering, then of course, they're going to stop the fight. But you can land 100 shots at me. What are those 100 shots if they're not affected? You see what I'm saying? So as I'm blocking, I'm talking to Herb Dean saying, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm talking to him. So after after the situation at hand, I'm like, oh, I'm in, I've been in this position before. I can either bridge up or give him my neck or lock his arms down. So I chose to lock his arms down. So that was the idea at hand. So... After I did that, I was in that situation already twice, actually. Jamil, I was in that situation with Jamil, and I was in that situation with Rocky Edwards where the grappling exchanges wasn't wasn't to my caliber because they caught me, they caught me, I would say, off guard. They talk a good game about striking, and then it turns into a grappling match. So it's like, oh, okay, I thought we were gonna we were gonna stand up for it, but they go directly for the shot. Which was kind of something you expected too, because you're both in a in a weird way cut from the same cloth, right? Yeah, like people scream, "Oh, NCAA champion, Division One, this Olympic hopeful, that blah blah blah." You can't count me out because at the end of the day, you see where I come from and what I've done, and it's like, what if I was able to go to these colleges? What if I was able to get the opportunities as you like you did? You can't count someone out because you had the opportunity and they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like. I come from a family that we make do with what we have. You know what I'm saying? We make do with what we have. As long as there's a roof over my head and everything else, that's what my grandmother cared about and my aunt and my uncle that was taking care of me. That's what they cared about. So you can't sit here and be like, oh, I was an NCAA wrestler and this, that, and the third. Dude, I wrestled many people in different tournaments from all kinds of levels, and I pinned them. Like, I can keep up with whoever I want to keep up with. I know for a fact that my wrestling, I could have been in the Olympic. I could have been on an Olympic team. People keep thinking that, oh, it's easy to talk about. I know the work I put in behind closed doors. I could have been on the Olympic team if I knew what doors to walk through to get there. I could have been in a Division I school if I understood what was going on, scholarships the whole night. But I didn't. I wasn't wasn't 
told these things. My wrestling coach, Mr. Navarro, had brought that to my attention, but it was already too late. Well, luckily you've chosen a different path and it's paid off for you because, you know, you're able to thwart his wrestling abilities. And as you're talking to Herb Dean, you're telling him that you're fine. You get back to your feet. He shoots again. And then you start landing those William Knight elbows to set up the beginning of the end of the fight. I mean, going through the adversity and getting the win, it, this is like the way it should have been, William, for you. I mean, I feel like this was, in a strange way, the kind of fight that defines you as a competitor. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's accurate. Like, I respect you, Mike. I, I respect you. You know why? Because you actually do your research. You've seen I've been in worse positions. You got Terrence fight. Look at Terrence. I was in some, some, yo, he's about to lose positions. Got out. Jamil, I was in some deep and deadly headlocks with a guy who had almost 60 pounds on me. Because people don't know, I made 205 that day. And I was going up to CES when they told me that I was fighting heavyweight. And your boy, and I still weighed in drinking a little water from there. Like literally that day, I was 205 that day. And I went against this guy that they brought in with, with the credentials he had. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I sat here and fought no bums. Like, and then Rocky Edwards, where he comes from, the people he fought and the skill level he has. People got to realize I've only been doing this for four years. For 10 years out of school, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I wasn't in the gym. I wasn't lifting weights. I wasn't training. I was just gaining weight and playing video games. And one thing led to a next. And I, I got introduced to Iron Will Fitness and Thornton's Mixed Martial Arts Fitness. And those two head people created such a monster in myself, me. When did you like? When did you feel like this was the right move for you? Like you, you, you talked about how pivotal these coaches were for you. Obviously, you've aligned yourself with some with some really strong people. Tyson Chartier, you gave him a heart attack on Tuesday night. That's just the kind of guy that he is, wearing that backwards hat. You know, when did you know like this is it, man? Like you had the confidence, especially after not doing something for that long. Once you got out of school, like when did you know like this is this is it? Like I found my calling here. Yeah. So. Me, the life is the, the life experience that determines a fighter. You got to realize, like, people don't realize there's, even you, me and you could sit here across from each other from the cage and clearly I'm going to look like the guy that's going to win, right? For all I know, you've been through something worse than me in life that, that, you're, that, that puts you in a situation where you won't let me win. I, I, it just can't. You've been through so much. What's, 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 What's that sense of getting your hands raised? Like just that confidence to let you know that there's still a chance out there in the world. So that's where I come from. My my years of growing up as a child, th those were my hardest fights. Me fighting in the cage is the easiest thing I could do. Like I train every day for this. I'm in the gym. I call my coach. I'm with Carmen. I'm with Ed daily, day in and day out. Like people say, oh, it's a job. I actually enjoy this. This is... It's not just a job to me. It's something, this is my getaway. This is my getaway. This is my little chance to, to sit here and actually express. That's the word I'm looking for. I get to express what's been buried inside me for years. I get to do it through the beautiful art of fighting. That's exactly how it is. Exactly that way. So when you see the aggression, when you see the speed, the power, the wittiness to overcome. That's all me. That's my true expression of who I am as a person. So for 10 years, I sat there just letting myself go. And I just said to myself, I need to do something. I'm a competitor. I like, I miss the, miss being, doing com competition. So I looked into fighting and things because wrestling was the only thing that I could try to look up. Like, I like that sense of being able to control your, your output, what you're going to do and the outcome. I didn't have to rely on the team. And then one thing led to a next and I went from being on mats to into a cage. You've told your story a few times. Like if people Google William Knight and your story, they'll be able to find it. But some people are seeing you for the very first time here or they saw you on Tuesday night for the first time and they want to hear <laughs> more from you. So what was the breaking point for you? Because you said like you put on this way, you let yourself go. And then finally you were just like, all right, I, I have to do something here. Do you remember like the certain breaking point for you? Yeah, I do actually. So I was in, it was 2011 actually. It was 2011 
when I seen a photo of myself from high school. I it was in my yearbook actually, and then uh, I didn't pay no attention to it. In 2015, 2016, when I was helping move, that same photo fell out of the book, and I'm just sitting there looking at it, and I'm like, "Dude, look at me on the wrestling team, and smiling with my my varsity suit on and everything, and I was just a monster." And I'm like, looking at myself, like, "How? Did, how is this? How did I let myself get to this? Like." I really was smiling and laughing. I was going crazy for a little bit in my head. Like, that's me. That's me. I'm looking at myself right now. The big difference between being 196 pounds and being 297 pounds. I really sat there and looked at myself and I told myself in the mirror, like I looked at myself and said, nah, you got to change. It's time to get back to your old self. And then I said, nah, I don't want to be my old self. Let's be better. And I just kept saying that over and over. I'm like, let's get, let's be better. Anybody who watches Dragon Ball Z, that goes deep, man. That goes deep. Trust me. Watch Dragon Ball Z when the first season, watch the Vegeta saga. Like, listen to how Vegeta is and how he is as a character, how he built up and how he made these changes to himself to become better. That's me. That's me. That's why Vegeta is such a character that stands out to me. I have so colleagues. I have colleagues who are going to be all over that statement, by the way, as soon as you said that, be like, Oh, I know exactly what he's talking about. Now I have to go back and, and do some more research for our next conversation. What was that first day like, man? Like when you said, I'm going to make the change day one's always the hardest one. You got to get out of bed. And then once you get out of bed, like it seems a little bit easier. Like for me, I hate like running and stuff, but I, I know I have to do it. So I wake up at 6 a.m. and I try to go for a run, but I put my phone across the room because if the phone's next to me and the alarm goes off, I'll just turn it off and go back to sleep. If I put it yeah. across the room, I got to get up and go. What was that first day like for you? Like knowing that you were about to embark on this, this new journey? I literally cold turkeyed, which I never knew was going to be a big mistake, but I cold turkey. So what happened was I instantly stopped eating junk food like, I got rid of my junk food, all that stuff. I started, I, that same day I ate a salad from morning till night, I was eating a salad. Every time I got hungry though, it wasn't the every two hours or the portion stuff. Like I was eating a salad. Then out of nowhere, I went to the YMCA and put the treadmill on and started running. The worst mistake of my life. My shins were burning. My legs were burning. It felt like fire ants were biting on through my skin. It was the, my lower back started hurting because I'm all, I'm this weight. My knees started hurting. It was bad the first day, but that first day almost kept me from the second day. <laughs> so I was, I was real beat. I was like, yo, I don't know what I just did, but I'm hurt. I had to go to work. I was limping. People were asking, what happened to you? Did you have, you were at the party? You drunk? I'm like, nah, man. Like, I literally cold turkey. I was eating salad all day yesterday, thinking I was cool, drinking water. And I literally started my first workout with a 6.5 run. Even though I was tired, I would grab onto the thing and run, run, run. No incline, nothing. Because I didn't know the incline would help save your knees and everything else. So that first day was like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, nah, I can't do this on my own. And that's that's when I had to go search for like, alternatives and I found Iron Will Fitness. That's amazing. And, you know, th this journey has been, been, been pretty crazy for you. It hasn't taken a long time. And you were in the Contender Series last year, as everybody knows, and you were already signed to the UFC after that fight. You know, you got a developmental deal. And, and people don't understand, like, when you get a developmental deal, like, you are signed to the UFC, yep. but you're just kind of putting the out of test pool. Right. Oh, speaking of that, let me tell all my haters something. Okay. Let me tell you guys something real quick. I never in life used a fucking steroid. Sorry for swearing. That's I okay. never used a steroid. I never, I don't even know about cycling or whatever that shit is. I'm, I'm reading these things online. I'm actually learning more from these idiots than I have <laughs> in anyone because I don't use steroids. I never even knew what these things were. The enhancements and stuff. They're like, oh, steroids could be used for recovery. Like, I'm literally learning from these people. So let me explain something to you guys. One, I never use steroids. 
My genetics and my family is ridiculous. My dad, my brother, my cousins. My cousins are six foot five and they're big too. Like, think about this. They're six foot five, six foot five and a half, six four, six three. These dudes are no joke. These are my cousins. My brother's six one. He's just like me. So you mean to tell me? Me, I'm one of 14 siblings, by the way. I'm one of 14. So think about this. Me and my siblings, even my sisters. My sister Chelsea was in, um, she does gymnastics. She's a monster. You're telling me that. That means all of us are using steroids. Because I'm not the only athlete in my family. My, I got a sister. I got cousins. The whole nine. One. Two. I never use no steroids or enhancements. I don't, I don't believe in that shit. Like, I truly believe in my mind, even when I get sick and stuff, I don't use medicine. I I can't and I refuse to use anything that's going to help me get better or help me heal or whatever, like medicines and stuff. I don't want to become dependent on anything because when I get hurt and I can't afford it or I can't find something, then I don't ever want that feeling like, oh, I need this. I need this. Like, I don't use ibuprofen, Tylenol, none of that stuff, man. I literally don't. And it's crazy because people are really saying, I used to cycle. You could tell by his frame. Listen, world, I was 297 pounds. 297 pounds. I started lifting weights. I tried to build up thinking lifting weights was going to get me to lose weight, but it was actually building my body. That was for the first year. Then Iron Will taught me calisthenics and cardio and diet, which why I look like this. Do not hate on me because I diet and do shit the right way and lose weight and I, my body looks like this. I am sorry that my body looks like this. I, I'm telling you, I would choose to look a little out of shape. That way I can probably make 185, but I can't. I can't. Got into 205 is it. That's the most healthy state of mind, the healthiest that I can do. And I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm sorry that I look like this. I'm sorry. Blame my mother and blame my father. Well said. So you're telling me the Knight family didn't come down to breakfast, have some bacon and eggs and, uh, and a couple of shots of steroids, William? I mean, that's what people think. Welcome to the UFC, man. It's 2020. Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy, man. It's, it just sucks that the human world can sit here and watch these people put their life at risk in the cage and then sit here and judge them at the same time from a chair. And they're not even doing shit. Like it's, it's so funny to me because it's like, I'm, I'm looking at the guys making the comments. I'm like, bro, let me get you in the gym and maybe I could save your life. There's those people. And then you got the ones that I've been training for 20 years and you could tell by the veins in his arms that he uses steroids. Bro, because I'm vascular, so I'm vascular, I'm using steroids. Oh, you guys crack me up, man. That's crazy. I well, see a bunch of different posts. Like, you guys, you guys are crazy. Even USADA chimed in and was like 11 months clean with their thumbs up. Like, <laughs> like I've been tested. I've been tested six times in 11 months. Never once have I had the fear of testing. I can give you guys blood and urine every fucking month if I have to. It's not a problem. I'm in here grinding. If you watch my social media, you will see exactly why I look like this. But, hey, it is what it is, man. I just wanted to get that out there, you know? You're on their radar yeah. now. That's what happens. We, now you're in the UFC. People have to find something to hate. So it's, uh, it's pretty wild. Um, so we're all watching the UFC Vegas nine broadcast on Saturday. Cause you, we knew as soon as you got the finish over Cody Brundage that you were getting the full on treatment here and getting into the octagon for your next fight. And we're watching the card on Saturday and we get this announcement that William Knight's going to fight Alexa Kamer at UFC 253 on September 26th. When did this start coming together? William, like you just fought on Tuesday. When were you offered the fight, signed the contract, et cetera, bro. I've been wanting to fight that dude since he fought. I know. Um, Fabio. He said some disrespectful thing in the camera about 205 is like anybody in a 205 division can get it and blah, blah, blah. Mind you, I just won my debut for my, my um, contender series fight. And then he said what he said, or I think it was vice versa, whichever way. But 
I swear to God, the way he was looking in the camera, he was looking right at me when he said that. Every single day, I kept telling my coach, when, not if, when I make it to the UFC, once we get this contract, it was never if. It was once we get this contract, I want him as my first fight. I am grateful to God. Like, I'm so grateful and just humbled that I got him as my debut fight. He already debuted. But this dude is six and zero. I don't care about no record because any if you can see all the people who are undefeated, I gave him their first loss. I don't care about no wins and loses because you can have a ten and zero record and you could put those ten fighters. No disrespect, you could put those ten fighters together. And you'll probably have two and a half, de- two and a half decent fighters. Like people don't understand, people stack their record to build that confidence. I already have my confidence. I got my confidence from early stages of life so when i got him when 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 my manager hit me up i didn't where was i i didn't even make it home yet i didn't even (laughs) land actually didn't even land the second i landed the text came through the phone called me as soon as possible and it was like boom how would you feel fighting this guy in three weeks at first i was like i don't i don't feel like fighting in three weeks man my elbow's a little sore and i just all that ran through my mind was that little the weight cut and not being able to eat all the my my foods I like. Food, number one, people. I know you guys can agree with me here. Food is the devil. Food is the devil. Nobody told food to taste this good. I don't I don't respect food that tastes good and it's not good for you. That's that's just a that's that sucks. But back to what I was thinking, I was like, man. I'm not going to be able to eat my junk food. I'm looking I'm like, yo, I got food I want to eat, things I want to do, family events I want to go to. Then he told me the name. I swear to God, my whole demeanor changed. I was like, yo, I'm ready now. Let's go now. I'm ready now. I'll cut. Wait, when is the fight? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, I'm ready right now. I'm in, the, I'm in Iron Will right now. I'm, I'm literally in Iron Will Fitness right now. Like, People, 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 look, look, I'm in here right now. I'm in the gym now. I just finished doing a crazy session in here, man. I woke up six o'clock this morning, came inside of here in this facility, and I came and put in work, man. I'm, I'm ready, bro. Like, y'all, I'm 217 right now. I can make two or five today. I'm ready right now. That's how happy I am about this fight. And I guarantee you, I won't let the people down. What'd you think? First fight? I mean, not only do you get the guy you want, but you get to do something that you you told me you wanted to do before. You wanted to travel the world and see new places. And now you're going to see freaking Abu Dhabi in your first fight, too. Like, what do you think of all that? Dude, the fact that I'm going to fight Island and I'm fighting on the Anasanya card is freaking ecstatic, bro. Like, it's ecstatic. Like, I can't explain it. I can't explain it, but it's just... (sighs) Imagine you getting off this interview right now and then your phone goes off and then you look at it and it's a PayPal for a million dollars. That's the feeling I got right now. Wow. I hope, I hope I get that feeling. <laughs> That's the feeling I have right now. I'm, really, I'm so happy, man. I'm like, what? You <laughs> for what? Who's this generous? Like <laughs> you bless me with my, you bless me with my opponent. You bless me with the UFC contract. You bless me with a debut in Fight Island that everyone's talking about. You bless me um, to be among the savages of savages. And you bless me with a highlight. This is this card means more to me than what people think. Not only do I make my debut, this day is also the day they crown a new light heavyweight champion. Bro, that's full circle to me. All that's going to do is ignite a flame in me and make me grind even harder which creating a more dangerous version of me. So I'm grateful. This card is perfection. Like people say perfection doesn't exist. To me, this is perfection. Yeah. I mean, you get Adesanya versus Costa at the top, and then you get Reyes versus Blahovich, like you talked about. I know you don't like to make predictions on your fights, but do you want to make, do you have any predictions for those fights? Dude, Reyes is in a confidence on his mind where he feels he's the most elite striker in the world. And I feel that might be a downfall because you got a savage who's more hungry than him. 
So this guy that's coming in, like, you got to realize he didn't get a title shot. This is his title shot. You had a title shot. You fought John Jones. That's a confidence booster. Don't get me wrong. But people got to understand, you can be a lion and get wiped out by hyena. You can't have that confidence. Like, I'm the, I'm the king, as if you can't be touched. Because that the second you get comfortable, I swear to God, the second you get comfortable in your mind is when you start to become, you, you start to beat yourself. People don't realize a confidence can be a strength and a weakness. Do you think Wojovic is going to win? I, I believe he's going to win with a deadly ass knockout, bro. Wow. It's going to be, it's gonna be a, a, a savage knockout. I haven't been wrong yet. I told people Aldo was going to get knocked out by McGregor in the first 30 seconds of the fight because how his hand was shaking at weigh-ins. I'm like, he's going to come in with a wild right and Connor's going to counter him. I'm like, he's a counter fighter. Like, his hand was shaking. I'm like, dude, no, no. Don't let him get his mind like that. <laughs> what happened? Boom, seven seconds. Craziness. Um, do you have an official prediction this time because of what's what's at stake and how much you want this fight? Is there an actual prediction here? The savage in me that I'm going to let out is saying first round TKO KO. Like I'm telling you, it's not going to last five minutes. It's not, I will not allow it. I won't. I already told my coach, yo, hit me when it's the three minute warning. Then you're going to get everything you would have thought in 15 minutes and three minutes, five minutes. That's it. That's all I need. I'm not playing games. There's this ain't no cockiness. This is me saying that that's how much I don't like what that kid said. I think his last fight or the contender series, man, just the fact that we put our heart into it and he just comes in with this cocky ass confidence. Like, yo, it just rubbed me the wrong way. The way he was looking at camera, everything. It's not, I don't dis, I don't dislike him. I just don't like how, how he went about it. Fair enough. Which is kind of surprising because I've spoken with him a couple of times and he's a very respectful guy. So it's interesting. Hey, listen, I love it. I love storylines. It makes things bigger for me, makes big, things bigger for the viewer, makes things bigger for you, him as well. And I'm looking forward to this fight. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. on everything, man. Maybe what I'm a crazy a week. What's that? Yeah, maybe I'm taking a personal, but I'm in that 205 division, so. You got to. <laughs> You got it. You got a chip on your shoulder. That's <laughs> you can always get to try to find one of those whenever you can get it. So, Wayne, congrats on everything, man. Looking forward to September 26. All the best to you in training and safe travels to Abu Dhabi, man. Thanks, man. Looking forward to talking to you real soon.